Hi, Holly Mecker here with Instructional Tech. I'm here with five iPad accessibility tips for the iPad that you or your students need to know how to use today. Let's jump in. All right, tip number one, dictation. Dictation allows our students to use their voice to put text onto the iPad. Let's see how we turn it on. I'm gonna head over to my settings, which is the gray gear button. I'm gonna go into general on the left, and then I'm gonna look for keyboards. I'm finding keyboards in the fourth section down. If you look all the way to the bottom, you'll notice there's enable dictation. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that on. The toggle will turn green. I want to confirm by tapping enable dictation. Now, if I head over to my notes app, you'll notice on my keyboard in the bottom left-hand corner, I now have a microphone. That microphone allows me to speak my words and have them appear on the screen. Let's go ahead and try it. We love using dictation in class. Tip number one allows our students who struggle with getting their thoughts on the paper remove the barrier of having to type out what they're thinking and simply get their thoughts down. Tip number two is to utilize speak screen and speak selection. Let's go ahead and find it. Here I am in my settings. I'm gonna scroll down from general and go to accessibility. I'm then going to go to spoken content. Here's where I'll find both speak selection and speak screen. Let's go ahead and turn them both on and then we'll see how they work. I'm gonna make sure they're on by toggling them green. I'm gonna go ahead and also change my highlight content. I like the words to be highlighted as they're being read. Let's go ahead and change that. I'm gonna type highlight content and I'm gonna turn that on. You have some features here that you could change to whatever you prefer. I'm gonna open up a website on Safari. Here I have a Newzella article Let's go ahead and take a look at what Speak Screen and Speak Selection are going to look like. Maybe I'm not sure what that word is and I would like to hear that word. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it, tap that word and push Speak. Medieval. Notice it read just the word that I selected out loud. Speak Screen works in that it is going to read the entire page. Now let's go ahead and see what Speak Screen looks like. Before I use Speak Screen, I'm gonna push those double A's go into Reader, which we're gonna talk about in a second, so we have a little bit of a cleaner page. Let's go ahead and see Speak Screen in action. I'm gonna use my two fingers and pull down from the top. Speak Screen will read this entire page to us, simply by using this toolbar. You can move that toolbar out of the way by pushing the arrow, or bring it back by pushing that arrow again. Speak Screen and Speak Selection helps to ensure that our content is accessible to our students. Tip number three, change your iPad voice to Alex. Let's go ahead and see where we can find our voices on our iPad. I'm in my settings. You wanna go down past general to accessibility, and again into spoken content. This is where we will find voices. Voices is near the bottom, above the speaking rate. If you tap voices, you now have your different languages where you can choose a voice for each language. Under English, notice mine says Alex. Yours might say something else, like Siri Voice 4. To change the Alex, you're simply going to tap Alex, and you should be able to download him by tapping the cloud button. If you already have Alex downloaded, you'll have a check mark. I know that Alex is selected because when I go back to Voices, it says English, and then it says Alex. Let's listen to what Alex sounds like. I'm gonna hop back over to my notes, and I'm gonna use Speak Screen to read this full page. Again, two finger pull down. Alex is amazing. My name is Dr. Smith, and I live on Smith Drive. Notice he knew the difference between Dr. Smith and Smith Drive. Close the car door. We are close to the bridge. King Louis IV needs an IV in his arm, stat. Did you hear how he takes a breath between sentences? That is different about Alex. Alex understands nuances of English and also when to breathe. 
When I fill up my car, it's cost 273 quintillion, 235 quadrillion, 643 trillion, 235 billion, 754 million, 346,465 dollars and 43 cents. He also understands very large numbers. That is Alex. Alex is the voice all of our students should load onto their iPad on day one. Tip number four, reader view for Safari. I showed you a preview of this when we were doing Speak Screen, but let's really dive into it. Here I am in this article. There's a lot of distracting pieces here. Let's take away the distractions by going into Safari Reader. I'm gonna click the double A in the corner next to the URL bar and push Show Reader. Wow, that eliminated so many distractions for my students. Let's go ahead and try it on another website. I'm going to head over to the NASA website to an article. While the NASA website is amazing with information, it also has a lot of distractions for students. Let's see if Reader View helps eliminate those distractions. I'm going to tap the double A in the corner and push Show Reader. Significantly better for my students. There's some other options you have as well, like you can make your font larger by changing the size of the text. You can also change your font and you can change the way that your page is set up with its color. Lastly, you can push the share button. You can scroll down and choose markup. Now my students can write on this screen, they can start the big ideas, they can circle a word they're unfamiliar with. If you wanted students to take this somewhere, they simply need to push the share o button. They can then put it in their email and send it to you. They could use their notes. They could send it to Seesaw. They could send it into Canvas. Tip number five, guided access. Guided access is an amazing, amazing tool, but it needs to be used as a tool and not as a consequence. Let's talk about that some more. If we go into general and we move down actually to accessibility, guided access is towards the bottom. Make sure yours is toggled on. Guided access is going to lock students into an app. Students will not be able to leave that app unless their iPad dies naturally, unless you unlock their iPad. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna go back into Safari and I'm gonna triple click my home button. I now can choose Guided Access. Notice my Guided Access is turned on, and it's turned on with a time limit. Let's talk about that time limit. I'm going to triple click the Home button and tap Guided Access again. I'm gonna put in my passcode. Here's where I can turn off Guided Access for my students, or I can go into the bottom corner, go to Options, and change my time limit. I recommend using time limits as a way to empower students to focus, not as a way to punish because they're off task. So I noticed Billy, Billy is struggling. Billy's trying to play math games on his iPad instead of working on his reading. Maybe I address Billy and say, hey, I notice you're struggling a little bit. How about we go ahead and turn on your guided access for 10 minutes and let's see how much you can get done. We stay focused for those 10 minutes. Maybe we can have three minutes where you're able to go and do something creative on your iPad, and then we'll put guided access back on. When you approach guided access as a way to help students focus, you do not get into a power struggle with students over who's controlling the iPad. So that's it. Those are my top five tips for accessibility features that you should use and turn on for your students.